it's MK and I am back with Christie's Beautiful Life, the best of 30 days of sketches. And this is the sketch that I am going to be inspired by today. It is by Scrapbooking Lauren Tides Inc., which I think it's incorporated. <laughs> so um, today is Tuesday. So I pulled out my tools. I'm going to play with punches today. I only pulled out one punch for the show and tell. It is a punch by Close to My Heart. I do not believe that Close to My Heart sells any punches anymore. I also printed off a couple of bulldozers. Actually, they are skid steers that I want to play with, and I'm going to color them with my Thule Art paint pens. I absolutely love my paint pens, you guys, and I have them all in rainbow color. And then I pulled out some twine for my Not Just For Boys Kit Club kit, which is actually the packaging um, twine. <laughs> I don't throw anything away from that kit. Uh, I also have this really cool geometric shape that was a cut file from Just Nick, and I thought that it represented the grid behind the cluster really well, so I'm going to try to bring that in as well. I have some paper stars that I just punched out, and then I have my last little bits of 6x6 six six papers from the Stampin' Up! collection. I think it was called In the Garage, you guys. I am not really sure. The packaging got thrown away a long time ago, and I believe I only have a few sheets of these left. And then I have this uh, Kaiser Craft paper that was from Time Machine many, many moons ago, and this is all that I have left of that. I also pulled out this really cool oxidized paper from Craft Consortium. I don't remember if it came from the metals or the patina paper pack. I never got the patina paper pack. It was gifted to me um, by a friend here on YouTube. So actually, she's not on YouTube. It's one of um, the gals that's a subscriber that gifted it to me. So anyways, let's color some skid steers. So these paint pens have to be activated. Um, in order to use them, my, my light gray one has not been activated, and I thought I was showing you guys how to do that. Unfortunately, my camera is zoomed in so close that uh, it's you can't even see what I'm doing on the outside. And so I decided that I was going to go ahead and just cut that out because it's really, um, you're staring at a couple brown dozers. <laughs> Actually, they're not dozers. They're skid steers. I apologize. I keep calling them the wrong thing, um, but this is uh, going to pertain to the photos that I have in mind for a layout down the road, so I thought it would be kind of cool to incorporate just a few, um, but I do want to use up this paper, so uh, my 6x6 six six papers, so I'm going to make more embellishments than I actually need for the layout. I'm just going to finish up coloring, and then I do actually color the second one for you guys, just in case. I do go back and put several layers of uh, the yellow on on my wood grain because some colors soak in to um, to the wood and they're not as bright as I want them to. So I do end up going and putting on. Um, I've already put two layers on my um, on my first uh, skid steer, but this one here I only put one on, and I don't make you watch me put a third layer on because I just really want. Oh, I put two. I lied. Um, it just soaks in real fast, this yellow does, and so I wanted it to definitely be a yellow compared to the wood grain that's already on there. Um, it just kind of blended in a little bit too much, and it wasn't yellow enough for me, but I wanted to make it as, um, well, we call it cat yellow, as, as cat yellow as I could possibly get it um, without actually purchasing the color cat yellow. <laughs> which you can. That's a thing, you guys. Um, <laughs> so coloring in the tires and um, a few of the dots in this dark, it's kind of a bluey gray. And then, of course, my bucket is that really cool um, light gray. And I uh, always forget to out, you know, to zoom out of my, um, to zoom out, but I, I was just punching away. Thought I'd leave it in here because they came from somewhere. <laughs> And the first thing I was going to do is try to keep them all in order um, by the image. And I thought it would be really cool if, um, you know, they, they recreated the mechanical image in the back. But they didn't look like anything to me. So I thought, oh, not even worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and punch it out. And of course, I have the negative for later, later. You know me, I don't throw anything away until I absolutely know I will never use it. So I'm, I'm going to try to save that, uh, that negative for something else. I zoomed out 
and then realized that I wanted to color in my stars and I definitely did not fast forward this at all. So I'm going to color a couple stars for you guys in slow-mo. Actually, this is real time. Um, I have this rust looking paint pen and uh, yes, this I want to go all the way to the edge and because these were cut out, they weren't punched out, they were cut out with my Cricut. They're actually the negative from another star image and when I get perfectly good stars from the negative of a, of a Cricut image, I cannot see myself throwing them away, you guys. They are so useful and so handy to have on, you know, just just hanging around. It It's, I, I can't say it enough that it's, these stars are are just useful for anything and so I keep a whole bunch of them around and these ones I just picked um, several of them actually from small to large and that's it so yeah so I decided that I was going to have them this rust color because of that craft consortium paper uh, I wanted to bring that in I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with the craft consortium paper because of the fact that it is rather on the large side and I'm trying to keep these embellishments these particular embellishments a little small um, so that way they fit on the layout that I would like to use them on but I do know that um, sometimes it it doesn't work out um, sometimes the embellishments um, that I create for a layout they don't work so okay deciding how large I want my um my square. So if you look at the sketch, the sketch has two photos on top of a on top of a rectangle. And then of course it looks like arrows on either side going up and down, titles on either, you know, on the top and the bottom, and then a small little cluster with twine over on the left with more little squares. So I'm trying to recreate that for every single little rectangle that I created or that I cut out of my paper. And I cut six of them. You only see four, but I did do six. And I decided to um, punch out using my one and a quarter inch punch all the little squares. And then I took the uh, the teal or the aqua. No, this one's definitely teal. Um, I took that green paper and um, also more of the white paper. So I have six. I have three squares that are kind of the same and three other squares that are kind of the same. So my one and a quarter inch squares are, um, on the left rectangles are going to be backed in the green and on the right rectangle they're going to be backed in that white with nuts um, with yeah they're nuts on on the printed on the paper. And then I divvied up all of my all of my embellishments. This is what I do to make it easier for me to decide how to make these embellishments, how what you know, how to put them together is I take everything that I pre-planned and divide them all up. Now, sometimes they don't make it because of the fact that it's too crowded, it's too much, but I always make sure that I start with what I wanted on the cluster. I definitely um I definitely don't mind leaving things out like <clears throat> excuse me, like a star or two, but I don't um I, I divvy everything up first before even starting to make a cluster. If I just had a little pile and I started pulling things in and making clusters, then they're not cohesive that way. Whereas if you start with a foundation and um, divide and conquer, then all of your embellishments start to look the same, you know, within a, within a certain reason. I mean, none of these embellishments look um, the same. None of these clusters here look the same. Um, even though I'm using the exact same elements, but they will still look really good on a layout because they are made out of the same exact elements, if that makes any sense. So I did divvy up my um, my twine as well. I split it into sixes and um, just went ahead and um, divided it into all of them. Then I decided I was gonna try the bow because that was what was in the sketch. And no, I'm, I'm not a bow person. That's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna take the bow apart and just try to do a small little weird loopy knot thing and I really like it. So that is what it's going to look like. Of course, I'm not sure if I want it poking up just yet. So I do fiddle with the bow quite a bit <laughs> and I like it pointing down. So that that is absolutely perfect. Okay, and then I actually forgot why I had these really cool squares. And instead of putting them on the back, like I intended them to be, I put them on the front underneath my squares. So I, I really do like them a lot more 
uh, this way because they're actually visible. If I would have put it in the back, it would have had to stick out quite a bit in order for it to be visible. Um, so I kind of like this little happy accident going on. I'm going to poke up one star just because I wanted to give it a little bit more dimension other than this cute little skid steer. And that is my first cluster. Oh, nope, I forgot my, um, my triangle elements. So I'm going to go ahead and just have them. I, the whole time, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole time that I was putting this together, I definitely wanted something, um, <clears throat> sorry, I wanted to figure out how to put them on the cluster without actually having them on the cluster, if that makes sense. It doesn't make any sense. So I ended up just putting a tiny little dab of glue on one of the edges and poking it out of um, the edge of my little of my little rectangle. And I will do that for all of them. So here I go again, tucking it because I really did like it, even though it was a mistake, but I did end up really liking it because they all, it sticks out really well. I'm going to go ahead and glue those triangles on again before I forget. Plus, I think I wanted them behind this star and I needed to glue the star down. So, almost forgot my twine. Oh, I probably did. Yes. So, I'm going to go ahead and tie the twine, but this time I wanted it to go only on one of the squares instead of both of the squares. And so I really like how it's looping around like that. And there you go. Next little triangle. And what I'm doing is I'm doing all of the triangles that were on the right. So all of these squares were backed in the green. And I'm trying to stick with how the, um, how the sketch looks. So both of the squares are overlapping. Um, both of them are kind of at an angle. One of them is really at an angle where the other one is slightly at an angle. And then, of course, adding my little squares because of that grid behind the entire cluster. I love the fact that I was able to cut up this um, uh, this cut file and be able to use it around, you know, for everything. And they it doesn't look the same. No two no two clusters look the same. I absolutely love that. So still fiddling with those little knots. I'm still not sure if I like them, but once they're on there, they look great. And I don't like, so I got a new mat. Um, I still have my glass mat underneath. Um, and I have to tell you guys that the magnets still work. They're not as strong as they used to be, but they still work through this new little mat. However, it's like the Heidi Swap mat and everything sticks to it, especially this twine. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if I'm sold on the mat or not, but one of the things I don't like about my glass mat is the glare. I can't have all my lights on because that's all you guys see when I, especially when I do a close up like this, unless I keep it covered with a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you can't see um, past the glare. At least I can't when I do a voiceover. And so I'm giving this new mat a little try. I'm hoping that it's, I'm hoping that it is, um, you know, just a, just a new phase of collecting everything under the sun. <laughs> It wipes up really nice with just a baby wipe. It, I, I can't, you know, I can't um, complain about that, about the fact that it doesn't wipe up. The Heidi Swap one never wiped up really well for me. Um, but I do know that uh, lots of people use the Heidi Swap one and they love the Heidi Swap one. I just don't understand. I can't get past all of the things that stick to the Heidi Swap one and that I can't just wipe it off. Whereas this one, I can just take a baby wipe and it wipes right off. Um, this particular one happens to come from scrapbook.com. It's called, it's, they call it an exclusive because it is their brand. It is their, um, their, their own thing. And so I picked it up because A, it was white and B, it was larger than a couple of the other, um, mats that are out there. The 14 by 14 mat just never works for me. So I'm going to use it in a couple videos, see if I like it. Uh, if not, it might, um, it might just be used as, you know, one of my painting mats, but I do know that it's already stained from my rust color, uh, pen that I used. So when I, when I was coloring with my pen, I, um, or my, yeah, my ink pen, my paint pen is what it's called. Um, I wiped it up after I was done, which means that most of it was dry and it, it did end up staining, uh, slightly on, um, on that. So anyways, 
just thought I'd give you guys an overview of my new mats and what I'm using, but all the threads down at the bottom are driving me nuts. I can't wait to finish and get rid of that, but I knew that if I just wiped up after every one, I would be wiping up for days. And the fact that when I do use a baby wipe, it's not, um, it doesn't dry right away because it's a silicone mat. And so, yes, uh, I do, I do have to be patient and wait until I'm completely done. So that way I can wipe it up and then the mat dries. I believe this is the last one though. Here it is. I did put this one, um, the, the cut file in the back this time. Um, because of the fact that I wanted, um, well, for one, it was huge. This was the leftover pieces from everything, and I didn't really see the need of keeping any of the extra pieces. So I wanted to make sure that I used them all on this um, on these clusters. But I put them in the back because I could see lots and lots of them. Plus, I really wanted one to truly represent the sketch, um, even though now the arrows are going not up and down like they should have, but I really liked the fact that they, they went, um, down at the bottom, they almost look like the tracks, the treads of, um, the skid steer tires. So that's, that's one of the things I wanted, um, to represent. So that is it. Putting the little last pop dot on my embellishments. And these are the six little embellishments that I made. Now, like I said, I don't know if all of them are going to make it on the layout or not. We will see. But um, I do have a specific layout intended for these, and that is where I got my color scheme from. But I love the way that they look. I love the rust color stars that were added to it. Um, I, I just like that little pop of rust <laughs> in amongst the, all that green. So anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really, truly appreciate it. Be sure to check out everyone else in the playlist, and I will check y'all later. Bye.